Welcome to Fit for Life with Karen. I hope you had a good night's sleep because we're gonna, we're gonna do some exercise right now. And did you notice the way I'm sitting, nice and straight? So before we start, let's just grab the knees, pull yourself up nice and tall, wonderful. And I hope you like our holiday decorations. I like it to look cheery. And uh, we're gonna talk about the big three today and we're also gonna do some exercises of each one of each basic fitness component. And we're gonna start with strength. You know, strength is very important. We do it, what, twice a week uh, with, with a little rest in between. So if you do it on a Monday, it might be a good idea to wait until at least Wednesday or Thursday for the second time, one or two days in between, because your muscles need time to, uh, to heal, actually. And when they do heal, you get a little bit stronger. I mean, it's a very minute amount, but you do, it does work. You just have to do it. So the big three I'm calling it, we're going to keep it simple, as I said, uh, is strength, flexibility. You know how to do that. We're going to do some of that, of course. And then for the lower body, we're going to do some standing exercises, also balance work. So all of it, we need all of it. Um, and I think these are the most important of the six basic fitness components. So are you ready? Do you have your weights handy? Sometimes we use bands, but today we're gonna do the weights. This is what the bands look like, and I hope, I hope you all have one by now. So I'm gonna grab my weights. My weights are five pounders. Um, most of you will probably be using two pounders or three, hopefully. And when you've been doing this for three weeks and they start to get too easy, that's when it's time to go up and wait. So let's just keep that in mind. Uh, one pound weights don't do very much. They're for people that are very, very weak. They do something, but it's a very, very small amount. So don't sell yourself short. So we'll, I'm gonna use my five pounders and we're gonna do one set of 10 repetitions right now. So you're gonna bring those weights right up to your shoulders and then slowly down. Wonderful. Try it again. Is it difficult? When did you do it last? I hope you are doing this when you're not watching me too sometimes. I am on most mornings and I try to do it twice in a week so that you'll get all the exercise you should be having. Let it come down slowly. That's where you gain the strength. Not so much coming up, but slowly down. I think that was four, I hope so. You should feel a little fatigue at the end. If it's too easy, you definitely need stronger weights. So keep that in mind. Because everyone asks me, how much weight should I use? Well, it's, it's different for everyone. It depends on your fitness level and your existing strength right now. So up to the shoulders, you can go pretty fast, but slowly, at least four seconds going down. If you wanna do six, that's fine. Let's do another one all the way up and then slowly down, all right? Now what I'd like you to do is take two weights and see if you can do a couple with the two weights. Now if this is impossible, then you know that you're doing at least enough weight. Bring your elbow into your body for support and up to the shoulders. And coming down, you're gonna feel that. Ooh, I can feel that. Try it again, breathing out, don't forget the breath. Every now and then, to remind you not to hold your breath. So we'll do just four of these. Try it again. Feel pretty good. Slowly down. Again. Out on exertion. And then slowly down. Good. All right. Bring your arm all the way down. And then take one weight and then the second one. You can also cross them over. It's easier to hold than to try to do it with both and that position. So let's bring it all the way up to the shoulder, sitting nice and tall. Don't let this collapse. Keep those shoulders down and your head up, right? Up to the shoulder and then slowly down. Let's go up a little bit faster. Up and one, two, three, and four. How does that feel? Try it again. All the way up. You're getting stronger each time, but you have to be consistent. You can't do this once a month and expect it to work, right? And we need strength for everything, everything we do. Let's do it one more time. Even if I've already done four, it's not gonna hurt, is it? If you can do it with two weights, that's pretty good. So this is called what? 
the bicep curl. Let's put the weights down. Where are the biceps? Right here, two muscles. Where are the triceps? Three muscles. This is very important. You don't want to strengthen one side and not the other. Okay. So for the triceps, well, we'll make it a little more difficult. You're going to come forward. Weights down. Your arms are straight. Don't collapse the body. Keep your back or your spine nice and straight and then come forward. So you're bending from your hips rather than your waist. Okay. Coming forward. Turn the weights over. Look to see if you can see the top of your hand up and out. Right there is a pretty good exercise just doing that. I like to put one foot forward, nice and tall, breathing out as you, oh, I can feel those triceps strengthening. Oh, yes. Breathe out again. Yeah. I know it's tough. Do as many as you can. Breathing out. Up. Good. And slowly down. So you can go up pretty fast. That first movement can be pretty fast and then at least four seconds coming down. I'm going to say this is five. I hope it is. Slowly down. Try it again. Breathing out and slowly down again. Can you do one more? And all the way up and slowly down. I know you can feel that. So let's take the weights and put them right down in your lap. Good. Let's relax for a minute. Drop the chin down. Feel a nice stretch in the back of your neck because you're tensing. You're clenching all of those muscles when you're doing strength training. Now, just very gently, don't drop the head back on your back, but just look up at the ceiling. If you want, you can take that chin and push it up and forward, and this is great for the neck. And then looking straight ahead, and we're going to turn the head, not your body, just your head, as far as you can go without pain, if it hurts, you stop doing it. And let's turn to the other side. Great. And then we'll come back slowly. Now we'll do the eardrop. That's for the side of your neck. And this is used in, in warm-up exercises too, so there we go. Wonderful. And then we're going to bring the head back up. So we worked on biceps, triceps. What about your deltoids? The trapezius, the big muscle across the upper back, we're going to work on those too. We're still working on the upper body. Arms down. Come forward. I'm, see, now I'm starting to round down. I can feel it. So let's sit up straight and then come forward this way. So what we're going to do is out to the side and slowly down. Can you feel that? Upper back, shoulders, deltoids, trapezius. up. Hold your abdomen in. I mean, it kind of happens naturally, so it's a good tightener. Bring those arms up to the side and slowly down. Don't you feel good that you're doing something good for yourself? Now remember, muscles weigh more than fat. Keep that in mind, three times more actually. So breathe up, but you'd rather see that weight in muscle, wouldn't you? Let's call fat adipose tissue. That's nicer, isn't it? Try it again. Good. And then down. Let's try it up to the sides again. Your arms are straight. You're keeping that back straight. And you're strengthening your upper body muscles so that will improve your what? Your posture. We all have to work on our posture. Try it again. Now I lost count. <laughs> so let's do another one and then slowly down. Wonderful. We're going to do just one more, but I want you to relax for a minute, sitting up straight, shoulders down. Pull that chin in. This is where you should be. And think of just pulling that abdomen in a little bit. So this is part of the strength, thing, strength training thing or workout for the upper body. You're also tightening your abdomen. You're strengthening your back, sometimes your lower back. I'm going to give you an exercise for that sometime, too, without the weights. We'll work on our core. All right, let's do one more for the upper body. So you're going to turn your weights this way, horizontal. My weights are kind of big, so I'm going to have to watch it. Pull them a little bit closer to your body, 
and you're going to lift up. So there should be a straight line from one elbow to the other, and then slowly down. Let's bring it up again. Breathing out, hold it, and slowly down. Great for the core, great for your abdomen, and your arms, of course, and your upper back. So lifting and slowly going down. So this is number three. I remembered, that's good. And up again, and slowly down. I know, it gets boring. Um, I should probably sing to you or something to keep your mind going. Slowly down, try it again. Is this six? I hope so, I'm getting tired. And I should be getting tired. And then up again. You don't wanna be, you don't wanna make it too easy for yourself. Breathing out again as you go up and then slowly down. Wonderful. Let's put these weights down. I've been talking about the core, which is here. I'd like you to come forward in your chair, and we're going to strengthen and tone and tighten your core. Now, your core is what? Your abdomen, your lower back, your hips. All right, holding on. Make sure you're kind of forward on the chair, though, because you're going to have to go back, and I don't want you to reach the back of the chair right away. So let's take a breath up through the nose. And as you exhale, very slowly go back. Can you feel this tightening? All the way back. Be careful. If it hurts, don't do it. Just wait for us. Back. Wonderful. And then we'll come back up. So most of this is for the upper body still. Let's take another breath all the way up. When you exhale, when you exhale, exhale through your mouth and then we'll go back. Can you do it? I think you can. We can also do this on the floor. Of course, it's easier in a chair, getting up. Going down is easy, it's getting back up again, isn't it? Let's take another breath all the way up. And exhale. So this is for your core to strengthen. Strengthen it, tighten it, tone it. Wonderful. All right, relax for a minute. Open your feet. Let's just drop forward. You can round your back now. Don't worry about your posture. Let the arms hang down. Keep your head up. You don't have to drop your head down if you don't want to. Can you grab your ankles and pull yourself down just a little bit? Also, when you grab your ankles, flatten that back. Flatten it right out. Can you feel it? I'm pushing my elbows against the legs so that back is nice and straight rather than rounded. Good. Now let's do the opposite. These are great exercises for the spine. Keep your arms up there. We're gonna do a little stretch now, reach all the way up. And then the other side, all the way up, good. How does that feel? Feel pretty good, yeah. Up. And reach again. This will make you taller, but you have to do a lot of them. And all of this can be done standing, or most of it. But we are going to stand pretty soon, and we're going to strengthen the legs. Reaching again, and bring those arms down. All right, let's hold on. We're going to come back just a little bit. Try to stay forward in the chair. Uh, we're going to, as I said, we're going to strengthen the lower body, and we're going to start by doing the stand-sit exercise. I'm hoping by now you can do at least four of them. Uh, I'd like to see eight of them, if possible. So just hold on to your hands. Why don't we do it this way today? Cross those arms over. See if you can stand up without holding on to the chair. All right, try it again. Make sure you don't take a step forward because when you go to sit down, the chair won't be there, right? So you're gonna sit back down again. Try it again, standing up. This is to strengthen what? Quadriceps, right there, you need that. You need that for falls prevention. You need strong muscles, strong leg muscles, especially the quads, four big muscles. Standing up again, three. And if you do this as often as you think of it, every other day, a couple of times a week, you'll notice it will get easier and easier to do. Now, if it's very difficult, that means you need more strengthening. If you don't feel anything, do it anyway. So you can maintain the strength you have there. It's really, really important. We're trying to prevent falls. Remember, one out of three people over 65 will take a fall every year. We don't want that. 
So as I said, we're strengthening our legs. I'm going to say this is six, because my six and your six might be something different, but all the way up, good, and sit down. Can you do another one? And up, and down. How do you feel? All right. Let's do another little stretch. I'm going to sit back, take this arm, cross it over, grab the opposite side. Now, if you don't have arms on your chair, I hope you do, but if you don't, you can hold on to the bottom of the chair like this, all right? Now your free arm goes up straight. That's easy enough. You're reaching up as you bend, way up. Don't let this happen. That's not a stretch, is it? It's, I don't know what it is. Reaching up, up, up. Oh, doesn't that feel good? You can feel that stretch all the way down the side. All right, and then we're gonna do the other side. And then we're gonna stand and strengthen the lower body as much as we can. Good, and back, all right. I'm gonna get up without holding on. Now you have a chair to hold on to if you need to. Keep that in mind, right? Okay, to start holding on, I'm just gonna swing the leg back and forth just to loosen up a little bit. Back and forth, back and forth, good. And four, and five, and six. Doesn't that feel good and it's easy to do? It's a great little stretch. All right, let's try the other side. Good, wonderful. Three and four and five. Can you hold on with one finger and do it? And seven, good for your balance if you can. Ah. Maybe let go and do a couple that way. All right, good. I'm gonna turn my chair so you can see what I'm doing. All right, now we're gonna strengthen the hamstring back here. We've already strengthened the quadricep, that's important. But you have hamstrings back there, so we're gonna strengthen those a little bit too. You're just gonna to touch, so kind of straighten that leg, reach back with your leg, and then lift up, hold it, and put it down. Try it again, up, and down. And up, if, if, if it cramps, don't do it anymore, okay? Try it again, this is four, and five, and six. Easy to do, technically, isn't it? But if you're not used to doing it, it might not be so easy, all right? All right, I want you to bend both knees now. Feet, both feet are back on the floor, nice and tall. Watch that posture. You're stretching your calf muscles here when you do that also. And then come back. Now, same leg back. I want you to bounce it. One. This will help to strengthen your lower back, your abdomen a little bit. And five, and six, seven, and eight. Now we have to do the other side, so I think you know how to do it now. Just reaching back, toe, and do you remember? We're gonna bend, and two, and three, and four, and five. I think it's kind of easy, but again, as I said, if you're not used to it, you'll feel it a little bit. Back, we're gonna bend both knees to relax, good. Uh, let's do the, the same thing we did on the other side. So you're gonna just lift that leg and bounce it. One, everything tightens. The glutes, the abdomen, the lower back, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. All right, both feet down, and then we're just gonna bend both knees. Now what I've been trying to do every single day to strengthen my lower leg, that means the foot the ankle, and the calf muscle. I've been doing the heel lifts, which look like they're nothing. It looks like you're not doing anything when you do this, but you really are. You're strengthening all those things I just mentioned. And you need that for what? For balance, to prevent falls. It's so important to do that. And four, I do 10 of them, five. Now, if you want, you can do them slower. And seven, we'll say it's seven. And eight. This is a really important movement for falls prevention, to strengthen that lower leg. But you know, those calves are contracting, so we want to stretch them out a little bit. Good. Bend your knees. Ah, oh, that feels so good, doesn't it? Now here's what else I do every day. 
and I am, I am finding, because I'm doing it every day, at least every other day, but for a while at least, if you can do that, this one every day, to another set of 10, or at least eight, on the weaker side, the weaker leg. I haven't met anyone yet in, in my classes that say, no, both of my legs are equally strong. So let's do another set on the weaker side, and it is helping, and boy, it was difficult to do it on one leg when I first started. Maybe it'll still be difficult today, I don't know, but for the last couple of days I've noticed, but you've gotta be consistent. So I'm gonna stand on the left, because that's the weaker one, and just do a heel lift here, one and two. It feels much easier because I've been doing it. You get used to it. And five and six. So if you could do at least one set of 10 with both, both feet on the floor and then on the weaker side. It's really a really good exercise and it's really simple, don't you think? Nothing to it, right? All right. Now I'm gonna give you another easy one that you can also do in the chair for your quadriceps. It's, it's so simple, it's so easy. And here's what you're gonna do, just lift the leg up and hold it there as long as you can. All right, you're still holding on to the chair, yes? Um, hold on with one finger and see if you can still balance. So you're strengthening this and this, right? And you're also improving your balance. Do that, easy, that. Tucking under, now don't arch the back. Make sure this area, you kind of tuck under a little bit. Weight should be over the front part of this foot on the supporting leg. And see if you can balance for a couple of seconds. Make sure you have a tie shoe that holds the foot steady and it holds everything together, okay? Let's try the other leg, just lifting up. A Little more if you can, holding on, good. Now hold on with one finger. Make sure you're not going back, but slightly forward. Not this way. You're still nice and straight. See the difference? I, th I really think if we do enough stretching, we can improve our height. Bring back some of that height, creating space in the body, right? All right. <laughs> now see if, you can, see if you can let go. I'm gonna tuck under and see if I can stay there a little bit longer this time. But that, that tuck under thing is hard to feel. Some, uh, some people don't understand that, all right? Okay, let's try this. Nice and tall now. We're gonna do a little more stretching because we've been tightening all these muscles. We have over 600 muscles. That's a lot. So let's stretch the upper body and the lower, ba uh, lower body, but we're gonna do the back, okay? Holding on, you're gonna just walk back, that's all. Your arms are straight. You're gonna hold on to the chair. Um, you don't want the elbows to be bent. You want the arms straight, as I said. And see if you can flatten your back out as you come forward. You could keep your head up. It's a wonderful stretch. You can hold on to your sink and do this. Bend your knees, that takes the pressure off a little bit. Good. Now I'm gonna see, because I've been here for a few seconds, I'm gonna see if I can go a little bit lower. It is just amazing though, when you do flexibility, that's another fitness component how you can stretch out and do things you couldn't do before. So you're gonna walk back up. But as I said in the beginning of these shows, everything we do in life is forward, just about, right? Even walking, unfortunately. So let's go back. Open your feet just a little bit. Bring one arm up, hold on to that chair. Lift, lift up, lift your upper body out of your lower body, if you can feel that. Push the hips forward a little bit as you go back. This is the back bend. We don't do enough of this stuff. All right, bring that arm down. Let's walk back again one more time. All right, let's flatten the back out. How does it feel? You can probably go a little bit farther down, don't you think? Hold it. You should always hold this at least 20 seconds. I haven't been doing that because we only have half an hour, right? So we're gonna walk back up again. All right, lift your shoulders up. And then just drop back, push those hips forward, and then come back up straight. All right, I wanna try um, a balance, another balance exercise too today. All right, so you're gonna lift that knee up, cross over, lift it up and put the foot back. Try it again. Hold on with one finger, good. Do it again up and over, up. Doesn't have to be way up. Try it a few times without holding on. Up 
and cross, up and back, up and cross, up and back. Not too bad. I hope you've got a nice tie shoe or sneaker on, right? The other side, uh, hold on first. Lift up and cross it over and back. You're strengthening while you do this too. All right, try it. Keep the leg a little bit lower and see if you can do that without holding on. Now this, this is very simple, but you'd be amazed how many people can't do it. Most people over 80 can't balance for more than a couple of seconds, but not us, right? Because we exercise consistently. That's the key. All right, I'm going to let you sit down now. I think I've given you probably enough for today, but there's always more to do. And the third fitness component that we were addressing today is cardiovascular exercise. And we were actually supposed to start this show with that. So I think what I'll do, no, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. So what I'll do is I'll do it on the next show. So I hope you will tune in. Uh, but before I leave, I do want you to relax a little bit. You've been exercising, you're trying really hard and I really appreciate that. And you won't be sorry. And remember that exercise lifts our mood. And don't we all need that, especially today? Uh, where many of us are at home and just make good use of that time. So there are things that we can do to fill our time and just keep in touch with each other. There are many ways to do that. And I want you to sit back again and just relax now. We're going to do a very, um, I will call this a relaxation rather than a meditation because we don't have a lot of time. So I want you to take a breath up through your nose and then exhale, and as you exhale, drop your chin down. I know you can hear me. I'm pretty loud. Good. And then just bring your head back up. You can close your eyes if you want, because I find it very relaxing. What this will do is unclench your muscles, relax your muscles. Uh, let's put the feet out front, too, so we can relax a little bit more. And remember, it's not a great idea to keep those legs crossed all the time because of, what, compression? Circulation problems, be careful of that. So again, let's breathe up through the nose, all the way up. When you're breathing up, you should be expanding your abdomen a little. So think of filling that with air, like a balloon. So you wanna just push it out a little bit. It doesn't happen naturally. And then when you breathe out, you can bring it back in a little. Don't do it too really hard. Um, just pull that in a little bit. Your chin should come down, great. All right, you can bring your head back up slowly. Uh, but for the next, I'm going to say five seconds. See if you can just think about nothing. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. And you know what? I want you to try this again on your own for 10 seconds. It's not easy. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.